Police in New Jersey have released surveillance showing a man who was shot to death in his car during a routine traffic stop. Now, what started this entire incident was a man who did allegedly a rolling uh, stop at a stop sign, and then two police officers pulled him over. The man in the car is Jeremy Reed, and the two cops that pull him over basically start off the interaction in a friendly way, and unfortunately, it devolves to the point where Jeremy Reed uh, was shot and killed. Now, to give you more on this uh, story, Raw Story gives us more details. Police in Bridgeton pulled over the car in which Jeremy Reed was a passenger on December 30th. Prosecutors said that during the course of the stop, a handgun was revealed and later recovered, but witnesses said that officers Brahim Days and Roger Worley opened fire and killed Reed as he was peacefully exiting the vehicle. Now, this happened nearly a month ago, and at this point, we just had some testimony from witnesses. We hadn't seen any surveillance footage or dash cam video of what had actually occurred. Now we have that video, and I do want to warn you guys, it's difficult to watch. It is graphic, but it shows you exactly what happened. Uh, for those of you who might miss it, they found the handgun in his glove compartment. Okay, now take a look at the video. I got it. Let me get up on the car. Hey, how y'all doing? How you doing? Good. Hey, Officer Days, Bristol Police. The reason I'm pulling you over, you went right through that stop sign back there. Where at? Uh, right, right on uh, South Pine Street. Uh, hey, you got a driver's license? Yeah, I got my driver's license. What's up, man? Right. Can you go ahead and grab it for me? My well, fat stop sign, we stopped. No, no. Show me your hands. Show me your fing hands. Show me your hands. Don't fing move. Don't you fing move. Don't you move. Get him out the car, Raj. We got a gun in this glove compartment. Don't you fing move. Don't you fing move. Show me your fing hands. Show me your hands. Don't you move. Don't you move. I'm telling you, I'm going to shoot you. You're, you're going to be dead. I'm telling you. You reach for something, you're going to be Dead. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Keep your fing hands right there. You a hey, hey, Jerome, you reach for something, you're gonna be fing dead. He's reaching, he's reaching. Show me your fing hands. No, you're not, no, you're not. No, you're not. Don't move. Don't you Don't you move. Look, the guy, clearly the driver had his hands out. There's no question that he was following the orders. Uh, look, we've seen so I don't even know what look we can't we don't know what the guy was doing with his right, hands at first true. Clearly they saw a gun, but then was the guy not listening? I mean what did he keep sticking his hands in there? Yeah, we don't know what level of threat what seemed particularly bizarre to me about this one is we see so many of these Interactions and how hostile they are right from the beginning this one wasn't that way at the no, beginning. No, it didn't. There start was off sort of like almost like a camaraderie kind of. The guy wasn't clear why he got stopped, but they were trying to be, you know, sort of okay. There wasn't a real power play. Yeah. And then it just devolved so quickly. Um, maybe we could cue up just that last twenty seconds again. If you so, reach for something, you're gonna be no, dead. I'm telling you. Bro. I'm telling you. Reason reason. Keep your hands right there. You, hey, hey, Jerome, you reach for something, you're gonna be dead. He's reaching. He's reaching. Show me your. Hands. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Don't move. Don't you? Oh my God. I mean, I don't know what he was doing. Right. See that. See that is where this one is a little weird. We don't know yeah. what he was doing with his hands, and the officer was trying to, I think, put your hands away. And then, did he want him to get out of the car? It seemed like no. I don't know what they're supposed to do, but this is not. People are not supposed to die. By after going rolling through stops, and we all said when we watched it the first time, he barely rolled through anything. They were just looking for a reason to pull somebody over. So there's, there's a lot. Look, this is another one of these things where you don't know exactly what happened. You don't know where his hands were. What is the officer supposed to do if he sees a gun in the glove compartment and then the guy gets out, even though he says don't get out? What's the officer supposed to do? Do you have to shoot to kill? I mean, there's a lot of stuff. And the thing that's really 
frustrating is like we live in a country where everyone is supposed to have the right to bear arms right and anytime you talk about gun control everyone oh, not everyone but the pro-gun advocates will make the argument that no, no no right to bear arms we want to protect the right to bear arms the NRA wants to put a gun in everyone's hand even if they're on the terrorist watch list right but then if someone happens to have a gun in their glove <laughs> compartment and they open their glove compartment to like I don't know get out their license or their insurance or their registration whatever it is to show the cop then, ever, then the cop's going to freak out, right? right? That's, a, that's actually a particularly good point in this one where it's not yeah. exactly clear what happened because it's very clear that if there hadn't been a gun in the glove compartment that that guy would not have died. So even if we don't know what he did with his hands yeah. there in the getting out situation, but clearly had there not been a gun there, that guy would be alive. So yeah, that, and also there was a lot of yelling over each other, right? So if, you, if you're trying to understand what the person in the passenger seat is going to do, like just let him talk for a second so there isn't a miscommunication. There was miscommunication there because the cop is yelling, don't move, don't move, don't move, and isn't listening to what the guy is. Just hold on, listen to what the guy is saying. I mean, if he was reaching for his gun, okay, then obviously he's going to be an imminent threat to you. But I can hear the guy yelling, and I'm trying to understand what he's saying, but the cop is yelling over him, and so it just sounds like a chaotic disaster, yeah. when in reality, just take a step back and try to assess the situation. Right, and I don't know. The truth is, I don't know what if the cop is telling him, stay there, put your hands away, but don't get out, and then the guy gets out. I don't know what the cop is supposed to do, right. actually. I don't know what their protocol says they're supposed to do, but shooting him dead, I'm sure, is not part of that. Good indication of the bad training the cops are getting. Because he's screaming at the guy, show me your hands, show me your hands, then don't move. So what's the guy supposed to do? Move his hands so the cop can see his hand or not move or show him his hands, right? It's very confusing and the cop is getting agitated. The guy is scared shitless and when you're sh nervous and, and, and there's a cop screaming at you with a gun pointed, you might not follow directions perfectly because you're all jazzed up, right? So, that, so that's one. Yeah. Number two is that police officer was black and the victim was black. So... Uh, on this issue of race and, and police relations, it's so much more than race. And of course, blacks, uh, black victims have it worse than any other than any other race. But this it, it this transcends race. Yeah, it does. Police brutality is a problem of of police officers who feel that they have absolute authority to do what they want when they feel the least bit of threat. So we need to change that culture, and we need to ch uh, properly train these police officers. This is terrible. And as JR pointed out, in this instance, the cop actually reaches in. It looks like he pulls the gun out. So at that point, um, the threat is removed, yet he's still in a very highly agitated state, and he is itching to shoot this guy. So, so there were witnesses there, and uh, the witnesses for the most part, said that uh, the passenger in this case, uh, J Jeremy Reed, had his hands up. In fact, Denzel Mosley is one of those witnesses, and he told the press that Reed's hands were in plain sight and that the officers were telling him, get out of the car, then yelling stop, and then they started shooting. So, look, I, I don't know if that's an accurate description, the very end, yeah. right? Because there was a really, really chaotic moment where there was a lot of miscommunication and maybe misunderstanding which led to what happened. But I think that Steve's absolutely right. I mean, as a cop, I feel like you need to do everything in your power to de-escalate the situation. In this case, I feel like the situation escalated very rapidly. But, of course, there's that major caveat of we don't know exactly what he was doing with his hands. Maybe he did reach for the gun in the glove compartment. I don't know, and I'm right. not going to sit here and pretend like I do. Right. Right, we don't, I never heard in, yeah. in with the video that we saw, I didn't hear him saying get out of the car. Did you say it? That's the quote says right there. Yeah. But I didn't hear him say it in the video. I didn't hear that. So either. if he said get out of the car and the guy got out of the car and then he shot him, well then then it's obviously totally agreed. But if you look, if you dissect the video to the point when he does get out of the car, at that point the police officer had backed up like 10 feet. Yeah. So, and the way the guy got out of the car wasn't in an aggressive, hostile manner they, where he's going to charge the police officer. He was kind of calmly getting out of the car as if he's trying to his best to follow instructions. Maybe that was not uh, clearly communicated to the police officer, and he just panics and starts shooting. And that goes to my point about they don't have proper training. And, and I don't know what it is, but why is a cop freaking out when he's 10 feet away? He has his gun drawn and, and, and aimed at the guy. The guy is calmly getting out of the car. The gun was already removed from the situation. So this looks like a bad shooting to me. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not saying it's a bad shooting because the cop was an evil person who wanted to kill, the, kill this guy. It's just he panicked because he has bad training. You know, to your point about the training, my last thought on this is that when he kept saying, show me your hands, and I think this is what you're alluding to, 
he wasn't telling the guy what to do next. You know what I mean? So if you're, you, there's a heightened situation, you have a gun in your face, you're being yelled at by a cop, you just got pulled over, show me your hands, show me your hands. You don't know what, what's next. Was he, was he waiting to get handcuffed? Was he supposed to get out of the car? So it just leads, you know, it's like what happens after this? Yeah. And that's the stage that they never got to. Uh, well, we got to the next stage, but it wasn't the one that yeah. they were supposed to get to. I mean, these stories happen on a regular basis, and it's depressing to know that people continue to lose their lives for routine traffic stops.